I'm wearing my priestly collar, the yellow collar today. I am the high priest of foreskins, obviously. I'm wearing my priestly garb, my collar, which identifies me as, what does this do? It uh, signifies that you're only using uh, 0.01% of your brain cells. This is the reminder to the clergy that they're, <coughs> it's choking me, not actually using all their brain cells. Well, it's the yellow collar of nuclearism. I am the high priest of foreskin of the nuclearist, the nuclearist, the counter nuclearist, I might add, in uh, my dread red, uh, black isotopes, gamma, alpha, beta rays going away. Now I'm gonna try to combine something in this commentary and uh, Jan was very, Jan, M Miss Milky sent me a note, said, oh, that's an interesting icon you have. What the heck is that icon all about? I'm gonna just, fine, Jan, I'm gonna tell you. It's an anti-art painting. It is called The Devil in the Daffodils. It's a series, I, there's so many different uh, projects I've got on the go, I don't be afraid. Obviously, Fukushima, Fukushima. There is uh, Dead Men Standing, which are not done anyway. The, da the Devil in the Daffodils behind me is an anti-art painting. There's actually, a, her, his sister is on the other side, another devil in the daffodils, riding in his souped up pink Cadillac, his pink Cadillac, I think it's a, uh, actually, uh, I'm not sure what kind of car it is, but it's gonna go off the rails, we know that, and it's an anti-art logo, and it is my, it is my protest against the silence, the silence, that has been so ubiquitous among artists. And yesterday I made a comment on Philip Glass, a very well-known composer. As I say, he is composing uh, his, his, most no, uh, his most notorious composition is called Silence on Fukushima. Like all the other artists, like all the other ones that have been so absorbed into the culture of death, and the painting behind me is an anti-art painting. The Devil and the Daffodils, the writing is in reverse. If you look at the writing, if you can see it, it is on the bottom, on the rails, and he's sort of out of his teeth comes the expression Fukushima. Now, I don't really like making literal paintings. It's a little cartoony, it's a little literal in that sense, but sometimes, I guess, the idea behind my paintings is twofold. It's not just what it is that you're looking at, but how it was made and what, how, that how part of it creates, when you're confronted with my paintings, you are confronted not by just a subject, but you are confronted with a feeling of mystery of the how it was made. And this is very much part of the way I work. It's not just what you're looking at, but it how it was made and what it is that impacts itself on you through the process that I've developed, uh, what I call my breakthrough. Now, what I'd like to combine with this painting in the background is just a little follow up on my Philip Glass composes Silence on Fukushima. This is something uh, I had a discussion this morning with a friend. It got a little bit heated because there is still a notion, even among people that feel they understand the nature of us. It's kind of like Freud and Jung, the way I imagine Freud and Jung. And I'm a, quite a big fan of Jung through his philosophy or his labeling of the archetypes, something that we are all contained, oh again that word contained, the idea of the soul contained in. We are part of something much larger. We do not contain, we are contained in. Such as I uh, talked about the fact that the soul is not inside somewhere in this bag of blood. We are contained in the soul. We are part of a soul. In that sense, we don't escape the body and then have a great, uh, fantastic time in heaven with uh, 70 virgins. So my comment about, uh, yes, the discussion was, for example, that throughout history, there have been a continuity of atrocities. We have faced adversity continuously by design. 
the oligarchs by design to subjugate a population through wars and mayhem, whatever you want to call it. These are uh, behaviors that are antithetical to life, to existence. The idea of war is antithetical to the idea of life. It doesn't work. Where does it come from? Why do we, why do we still adhere to a philosophy of death? The culture of death is based on the idea of war functioning and artists have come out in the past and spoken against it. Guernica, Goya, other artists have made protest work. Uh, and here is where I part from most of my colleagues and some of my friends even that still believe somewhere that, and I get arguments about this all the time, how uh, hunger is destroying uh, millions and millions of people on the planet. How could I ignore the idea of hunger? Well, I'm, it's not that I'm ignoring the idea of other uh, challenges that we face, but after little boy was dropped, fat boy, fat man was dropped, everything changed. We are in the age of fission, fission. And as far as I understand, fission is not something that is ubiquitous or even exists even minutely in the universe. Exists, it has, it has now its, its presence on our planet. It is the most ignominious discovery in the history of the cosmos, as, as far as I'm concerned, because it doesn't exist in the cosmos. As far as my research shows, it doesn't exist. Fission is not out there. It's something that we manage to stumble on and say, oh, isn't that interesting? And when that happened in 1944, 1943, 1945, the entire playing field, it's not a playing field, it's a brutal, vulgar, vicious existence now in the presence of fission and what it is doing to this planet, to us, to all life on this planet. And it, and it, and it dwarfs, and it dwarfs everything else. Mr. Fission in the back, Mr. Fission with his teeth, with his teeth, uh, out of his teeth come the voice, comes Fukushima. We are now no longer, no longer in a, in a history that could literally be turned off if we wanted to. We can turn off the wars, we can turn off hunger, we can turn off coal-fired plants, we can turn off everything except we cannot turn off fission. We have not understood how this works. Fission is something out of our control. We are in a new age, an age that no longer has an off switch. We are no longer capable of controlling something we've unleashed. Oppenheimer, now I become death destroyer of worlds. Famous quote, Shiva. And I'm combining this commentary with the painting in the background, the idea that artists, especially artists of notoriety like Philip Glass, or any of the others that are being exalted by the culture of death, as I call it. I suppose, you know, I'm thinking, I'm feeling the glass compositions. Einstein on the beach, it's a long opera. It's hard to listen to the whole thing. But he had a premonition. And I have always said, we must defend our work. What is the defense of that work, other than sort of like a little psychobabble with some interviewer on BBC? The defense of the work is to be able to identify, as I have identified, Einstein on the beach is a premon premonition. It is a forecast of what he understood the age that we're in, the age, the age of fission. And he just drops the ball. The most significant event in relation to the composition, Einstein on the beach, his opera, the most significant confirmation of what this artwork meant has occurred and he is totally oblivious. Not because he doesn't want, it's not because he doesn't know. I, I believe he knows, I believe he knows. But if he opened his trap just even a little bit, they'd cut him off. He thinks he has a lot to lose. Now this, this guy is already in his 70s. You've got nothing much left to lose. Philip Glass, where are you? There are many people out there that have, that have significance in this culture, in this culture of death that could step out because ultimately we have nothing left to lose, I've said it. So I hope this makes a bit of an explanation. My counter painting, my anti-art painting, the devil, the devil in the daffodils going, taking us off the rails. And uh, the way I make the paintings are now in, 
uh, integral to the idea of Fukushima and the age of fission killing all life on the planet. And any artist who doesn't address this has no significance anymore. They may have had some significance during an age when things could be turned off, the switch could be turned off, and you can idly sit about and create some beautiful colors or make a lovely Vermeer. Whatever that kind of work is, it's no longer relevant. It's no longer relevant. That work is finished, unless, unless we can turn the switch off. And uh, where are the people that know how to turn the fission switch off? Testes, high priest of foreskins. I don't know what kind of blessing. What kind of blessing? I don't know. You make your own blessing. 